Oh man, she did what? Why is the government always lying? That's not your fault. That was your mother's job. I know it sucks. It's hard, but it's fair. If we don't get our heads out of our collective asses, we're going to be lost in the sauce. You knew he was sorry when you met him at VHS. Come on, baby girl. What's the solution? Look, I know I'm fucked. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Angry Nerd Podcast. My name is Arshawn Wade, a.k.a. The Angry Nerd. What up, what up, what up? Um, Before I get into tonight's topic, I want to give a special shout out to Dylan Brackley at Savage Hippie for the graphics and to my man Platinum Wax over at Young Black Wise Guy Records for the beat. If you have any graphic needs... I promise you, you can't find anybody better in the business than Savage Hippie. They have an awesome clothing line. They're local boys right here in Arkansas. You should check them out. Um, Also, uh, Platinum Wax. Just can't say enough about the guy. His beats are superb. He's working with some artists out of Southern Arkansas. And his record label is Young Black Wise Guy Records. Check them out. Okay, jumping right into it because I like drama and shit like that. This jumped right out at me. So apparently 50 Cent and his son are at odds. Uh, Marquise. Um, Wow, time is really flowing. I'm an old motherfucker officially because I remember when that kid was a baby. He's 24 years old. Um, So apparently uh, there's been a rip uh, between these two for a number of years now. And once again, it has gone public uh, via Instagram. And apparently 50 Cent in some interview or something, I don't know, somebody was standing by and recorded it, but allegedly 50 Cent says, um, what did he say? He said, uh, fuck that nigga in reference to his son Marquise and that he'd rather have Takashi 6ix9ine as a son than Marquise. Now, with such strong language like that, I'm like, I'm starting to think that the character Tyreek in Power may have been grafted after his kid. Uh, That's just my thought. Um, But is this really so strange? I mean, plenty of people fall out with their parents. Uh, Plenty of parents fall out with their kids. The only difference between this father and son duo is that they have millions of viewers that, (laughs) that tend to watch whenever they fall out. Now let's talk about some personal shit. You know what I'm saying? I've fallen out with a parent before um, and other family members as well. I've fallen out with brothers, sisters. This is normal stuff that happens. But I think that we have to be mindful that when we have the public watching, that we should handle our business indoors. I do not think that these uh, guys should be airing out their dirty laundry um, on social media. And then... Of course, Marquise, this is 50 Cent's kid, excuse me, 50 Cent's kid, after all, clapped back at his dad. <laughs> and he's uh, made a reference to snitching like, oh, snap, he'd rather have Takashi 6 9 as a son. Oh, I don't want no parts of that rat shit or whatever, some, something to that effect. And I thought this is very strange, you know, because... Uh, Early on in 50 Cent's career, he was plagued with rumors of snitching and then for him to reference somebody who is a reputed snitch um, in the uh, in the rap world. Is this our first snitch rapper? And apparently that kid was released from jail due to the COVID-19. Can't get away from COVID. And amidst all the drama with the COVID-19 stuff, we still got regular ass drama jumping, 24 and more. What are your thoughts? I'd love to see what the comments are after you guys uh, hear this. Because in lieu of the COVID-19 shit and everything that's going on with that, it seems like everything is small to that. Or every, it seems like to me, everything should be small. You know, because a motherfucker could be gone at the blink of an eye right now. You know, like you could literally not be here anymore fucking around with this shit according (laughs) to the CDC. And there have been deaths 
due to the COVID-19, even though I think a whole lot of it is the government and their bullshit and their fear mongering and, and whatnot. I think a lot of it is that, but at the end of the day, lives allegedly have been claimed to this virus. So, and with all the mass hysteria and stuff, it would seem like this is the time to be making amends instead of creating rifts. You know what I mean? It's like you would want to kind of bring your loved ones closer and you want to kind of check on them and things like that. I, I, I just think that if I'm hearing about people dying, especially in a state like New York, where they have like thousands of cases of COVID-19, um, if I'm watching the media and everything like that, that would kind of spook me, you know, that of the i don't know how many thousand they're saying there are uh deaths right now but excuse me sorry if i was gonna believe that i definitely wouldn't be causing drama with my kids you know what i mean and i think that the parent is a little more should be held a little more accountable for making amends than the kid and from personal experience, I said some things one time in a text message to my ex-wife in my defense, if I can defend myself, um, about my daughter. I was just not very happy um, with some of the habits that she has formed um, to the tune of laying on the couch watching it in, what'd you call it? Uh, Netflix for, 18 hours out of a day, you know, and I just really wasn't happy about it. And I used language when I was speaking to my ex-wife in the text message that I probably wouldn't use to my daughter. And I did make, you know, my unhappiness known to my daughter, but I didn't use this colorful language as I did with my ex-wife in this private text message between her and I some way or another i won't speculate on how my daughter ended up reading these text messages i'm fucked up by nature so i use language that uh, an adult shouldn't use to a child and i did had i had never thought that my daughter would ever read these messages or hear these words but she did and my daughter is my daughter so she's stubborn um she's a bit tough and she didn't want to speak to me she didn't want to speak to me and i told my wife well fuck her then you know she wants to be all up in her feelings i stand on what i said i mean what i said and i'm not gonna take it back and i stood on that for a while and for what I meant, I 100% I, I agree with what I said. But the way it was said in the message, I would have never spoke that way to my daughter. I would have never used that kind of language. I would have never expressed myself to that degree to her because I care about her feelings. She's my baby after all. She's my oldest child and she's my only daughter. So of course I would never want her to you know get language like that from her dad you know but i was i dug my heels in and i was like you know what you know she's 15 you know in a few short years she'll be an adult if she doesn't want to speak to me that's her choice you know what i mean she's making an adult decision she's gonna you know cut me out of her life so be it you know good luck kid and, you know, after some prayer and meditation, yes, that's right. I pray and I meditate. I ain't going to be down at the church house singing songs and passing the collection plate. But I do believe in prayer and meditation. I believe in all those good spiritual things. Um, I just got a problem with Christians and religion. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Um and I realized, you know what, Arshan? What if you were a 15-year-old girl and had just found out that your father expressed extreme displeasure with what he felt like was the direction that your life was going in based on some habits that you were forming? And I thought about 
how fragile I was at 15. And I thought about how, you know, easy it would have been for me to form hatred. You know, I was a mean little motherfucker, you know, and it would have been very easy for me to form some hatred toward one of my parents if I had read a text message like that. And um, so I started reaching out to my daughter. You know, I started with text messages. Um, now the first one still had a little bit of pride and ego with it. Like I sent her a motivational video, like, hey, you know, uh, you can overcome anything, you know, just keep, stick your mind to it, stay the course. And um, it was really bullshit. And I really had to break down and just say, hey, you know what, I'm sorry. Uh, I was I was wrong for writing those things. Um, and if you're ready to allow me to be back in your life, um, I'd really enjoy that. I'm your dad. I care about you. I want to be there for you. And I just laid it out there for her and let her know, like, it's not that I think you're going to be a failure because you want to watch Netflix for 12 hours a day instead of working on anything else. But I've had so many hardships in my life that were directly connected to bad decisions that I made. Bad time management skills, uh, poor money management skills. I'm still working on that. <laughs> um, but as a parent, you just want, you want your kids to do so much better than you've done in life. And I've made a plethora of mistakes. I've just made, I mean, just a myriad of mistakes. The, I mean, the list is crazy how many mistakes I've made. Uh, I mean, you could, it, relationships, uh, careers, uh, entrepreneurial endeavors. I mean, just all kinds of shit. I've just made mistake after mistake, gang banging, drug dealing, drug use. Uh, let me not skip over that. But so, and I just explained to her that my perception is peppered by my experience, you know? And it's like, if I had the information in my head now, 20 years ago, dude, I would, I would, I would, I, there's no telling where I would be. The kind of potential that I had at her age with the right guidance and the right you know, mentors and things like that. I mean, the sky would truly be the limit. And in my sort of morbid way, because I've lived a sordid life, I was trying to be that, you know what I mean? Uh, that was the kind of energy that fueled that text message. But I was angry and upset and disheartened. And I had to remember at the end of the day, nothing is more important than her than the fact that I'm her dad. Nothing's more important than that. Like nothing at all. Nothing's more important than that. Nothing beats that. And I'm like, hey, uh, I don't care what happens. If you turn out to be a dirt bag, I'm still gonna love you. I had to accept, excuse me, exercise some acceptance because whether I like it or not, time's gonna keep going on and she's going to be a woman. And I do not have to like what kind of woman she does or doesn't become, but I do have to respect her as a woman. And I have to recognize at 15 years old, she's on the cusp of womanhood, you know? So I need to start that practice now. And I always come from this perspective because I don't know any other perspective. Black, as a young black man, I stayed away from home because out here in the streets, I'm a whole grown man. But you go home and I'm little Arshan. You better not say no bad words, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I found that a lot of my friends had the same experience. Well, like we're out here in the world. Uh, we're fucking girls. We're running the streets. We're living life. And then you go back home. Don't you sass me, you know? And then I go places with my white friends and I go to their house and they're like, hey, ma, that's some bullshit that you sent me in a text message. I'm not going to fucking kill myself. And I don't give a shit what they're talking about. I'm taken aback that this man is talking like that with his mom as equals on the level. 
Do you know how I wish that I could talk to my mom on the level? If I could say, man, let me tell you, mom, you was right about these bitches out here in these streets. A's a motherfucker. Half of them ain't worth a damn. Just like you said. Before I could get to the second sentence, I would be slapped all upside the head, kicked off in the ass. I can't even openly express myself with my mom. So the reason I go black is because I'm black and I only know that experience. So I hope I, I excuse me, I hope I don't put off any of my white listeners by that. It's just reality. And I don't mean to exclude you. Um, actually, I'm including you because I see the dynamics that some of my Caucasian friends have with their parents, and I just envy that because sometimes I wish I could call my mom and say, hey, man, this bitch is tripping. You know, I wish I could do that, but I have to say, hey, uh, mother, I'm having some uh, social issues with my wife, and I was wondering if I could gain some counsel from you. Man, fuck all that. I want to call you and tell you that this bitch is tripping and I got problems because I'm thinking about choking this motherfucker. Uh, I wish I could really express myself like that with my parents. And I recognize that I was pigeonholing my daughter off into that same vicious fucking unexpressive cycle. So I want my kids to curse and people think that's wrong, but I want my kids to come and be able to express any and everything to me. If my son, he's 10 years old, and I long for the day that he comes in and say, man, dad, this bitch is crazy. Man, let me tell you about this goddamn teacher. You know, <laughs> and I might be fucked up. I own that, but I want my kids to have this relationship with me that I wish that I could have with my mom. You know, she's off into that church shit, you know, and I really just can't, ever be on the level with her you know what i mean it's like i always have to play this role you know and i really hate that and and it drives a wedge between us because i'm like i at 35 i don't really want to be around people who i can't be myself with you know what i mean it's like i have to work with people and conduct myself in a professional manner and i gotta be this guy especially as a nigga Oh, you can't be the angry black man at work. So I practice talking like this. Hey guys, can we do the X, Y, and Z? Hey guys, because if you talk like this, everybody's going to take it the wrong way. Hey, calm down, pal. <laughs> and I fucking hate it, but it's what I have to do to earn money. I get that. Um, when you go to these social settings, uh, you know, I kind of get it. Acting, uh, politically correct and socially suitable behavior. Yeah, but at my home, my mother's home, around my family, I wanna be able to talk about these weak ass motherfuckers at work. And I wanna be able to talk about these bitch motherfuckers in the streets. And I should be able to do that. And since I can't, I wanna give that to my kids. And I'm so glad that I believe in prayer and meditation because until I delved inwardly and dealt with myself and reflected on how I was causing a problem in my and my daughter's relationship, uh, I wouldn't be able to put the brakes on the bullshit that I was putting in the game. I wouldn't be able to do that. And I'm glad that I was able to do that. My daughter's um, here with me during the COVID shit right now. And I thank God we're able to smile and laugh. And my kids are so used to me talking crazy and shit like that. They just used to it. Um, and I want them to be comfortable like that. You know, go fake and be phony with the people out in the fucking world. You know, go do that with them. Go to school and be phony, go to work. And, but be real with me, be yourself with me. And getting back to 50 Cent and his son, in lieu of all this COVID-99 shit, I just feel like that w Hey dog, I wish, I wish I was famous and I knew 50 Cent so I could say, hey man, fuck all that small shit. That's your boy. That's your son right there, regardless of whether you it, agree with how he lives his life or how he conducts himself at the end of the day, that's your child. You know what I'm saying, homie? Uh, we're going to fall out and stuff like that from time to time. But this is what I ask my wife. When we get mad, we get in those heated debates. 
what if I died right now? Is that the last conversation that you want to have had with me? Is it really that bad? You know what I mean? And when you think, oh, you're thinking too extreme. Am I? People die. Motherfuckers die. So am I really thinking too extreme? I think not. I think that what we're arguing about or what we're at odds about is much smaller than that. So if it's that small, hey, let's sweep that shit under the motherfucking rug and continue being family. Let's continue being family. So whatever their differences are, I hope that 50 can put it to the side. And remember, that's your seed, son. I don't want, I, I, I hate that. I fucking hate it. Um, and I hope there's some good people around those brothers so that they can bring them together and father and son can be reunited. That's my time. Thank you for listening. My name is Arshon Wade, a.k.a. The Angry Nerd. Stay safe out there. Peace.